It's been quite a while since I made my first video about flashing new firmware on the Sonoff Basic. And the way I do it now is quite a bit different than the way I did it then. So it's about time I put out an updated video and show you the process that I use at this point, which is summer 2018, to flash the Sonoff Basic. I make absolutely no promise that this process will not change in the very near future. It's just the nature of the game. So let's start with the list of things you're going to need. I know over the air flashing is popular and a lot of people want to do it and I can understand why. But in my experience, the wired method using a USB to serial adapter has been a lot more reliable. So that's what I do. So the first thing you're going to need is a USB to serial adapter. This is the one I have and it's been working great. If you get this particular adapter, just be aware that it uses a mini USB cable. The mini USB is a little bit older. So you may have one laying around the house, but you may not. If you wanted to get one that uses the micro USB, this is probably the one that I would buy. Regardless of which USB adapter you get, you're going to need some jumper wires. If you're doing a lot of electronics projects, having a big pack of jumpers is going to be useful. So go ahead and get a bunch. Now because the new Sonoff Basic R2 has the serial pin holes soldered closed, you can't just use the male end of a jumper wire and slide it through the hole. But thanks to our good friend Mark, we've got a pretty easy to use and simple to make 3D printable jumper wire clipper holder thingy. This little beauty will hold the jumper wires to the contact points on the board so that you don't have to. If you don't have a 3D printer, my recommendation would be find somebody close to you who does. Maybe you've got a friend, sometimes local libraries or schools or maker spaces will have 3D printers available to use. If you don't have any of those options, then I would try something like 3D hubs. You can go on there and find somebody local that's willing to print something for you for a few dollars. If all else fails, you can contact me and I'll try and get you one. But if you live far away, the shipping cost could be prohibitive. It just doesn't make sense to pay $30 in shipping for a $2 plastic part. With Mark's Sonoff Basic flashing clip, you're also going to need some of these pogo pins. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a small pack, so I had to buy a hundred of them. Hopefully, we can find some other uses for them. Here's the Sonoff Basic. Seems like these new R2 versions don't have the QC sticker sealing the box anymore. So the most important thing about these new R2 Sonoff Basics is that the serial contact holes are soldered closed. So you can't just slip the end of a male jumper through the hole anymore. And just as a refresher, the square pin is three volts, then RX, TX, and ground, and then GPIO 14. When your Sonoff flashing clip is printed and assembled, it'll look like this. The pogo pins slide through the holes on the top end of the clip, and then the female end of some jumpers attach to the back of the pogo pins. Squeeze the clip, and it opens the front end where you'll put the Sonoff basic. There's an extra space here where you can put an extra pogo pin, but it's over GPIO 14 and you don't need to connect to that for flashing. Now the other end of your jumper wires connect to your FTDI adapter. Don't be mixed up by the color of my wires. I'll tell you which wires to connect where. Three volts and ground from your USB adapter go to the three volt and ground pins on your Sonoff. But the RX pin from your USB adapter goes to the TX pin on your Sonoff. And the TX pin from your USB adapter goes to the RX pin on your Sonoff. That sometimes throws people off. Now that we've got our hardware sorted out, let's get to the software. First thing we're going to do is go to the ESP Easy GitHub page and download this mega zip file right here. Save that somewhere where it's easy to find and then extract it. Now we're going to need to know where this folder is, so don't hide it from yourself. The next bit of software we're going to get is the Tasmoda Sonoff.bin file. Go to the Tasmoda GitHub page, and under Releases, choose the version that you want to use. For me, for now, I'm going to use 5.14. So I just scroll down, find Sonoff.bin, and download it. I'm going to save it to the ESP Easy Mega folder that I just extracted. And the last bit of software we're going to use is Termite. Termite's a serial terminal, so that you can communicate with your Sonoff through the USB serial adapter 
without disconnecting it from your computer. It's pretty handy, and it avoids the need for using the AP Wi-Fi mode. Grab this complete setup version, save it, and then start it up. Okay, I think I have everything set up now, ready to try the flash. One thing that I hadn't mentioned yet, but I probably should, is that your FTDI adapter may use 5 volts or 3 volts. If that's the case, make sure it's set to 3 volts. If you try and flash a Sonoff Basic with 5 volts, you may do some damage. Now with everything connected, I hold down the onboard button on the Sonoff, then plug in the USB adapter. Some lights should come on and you might hear a chime from your computer. After that, open your ESP Mega folder and click Flash ESP8266, the file I like to call Flash Easy. It should display the COM port that you have your USB to serial adapter connected to. Under Firmware, select Sonoff.bin, click Flash, and pray. Getting the pogo pins to line up and stay in contact with the right solder points on the Sonoff is a little tricky, but just keep at it and you'll get it. And here we are, flashed, done. Once you've successfully flashed, leave the Sonoff connected to your USB to serial adapter. Unplug the adapter from your computer and then plug it back in. Now open up Termite, open up the settings, select the COM port where you have your USB to serial adapter, and set the baud rate to 115200. And after a few seconds, it should give you some green text, meaning it connected. Sermite gives you a serial communication with your Sonoff. By watching it, you can see when it's in AP mode. But you can also type commands. So down here in this box at the bottom, you can type Tasmoda console commands. I have a text file that has all the console commands that I need to set up a Sonoff from the beginning, like my SSID for my Wi-Fi at home, the password, the MQTT broker information, and you can even set things like the topic, the friendly name, and the module type. I'll give you an example of the file that I use so that you can just copy it, put your own information in, and then paste it here in Termite. I'm going to put my information in off the screen. And it worked. So now the Sonoff is connected to my Wi-Fi, and I can see the IP address right here. So now I can put that IP address in my browser, and here's my new Sonoff. If I'm using a different module, I can finish the configuration here. But all the most important information I put in with my backlog command in Termite. So that's it. That's an update of how I flash a Sonoff Basic. I absolutely expect that the process will change at some point, but hopefully not too soon. Hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. To find out what I'm doing next, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help me out, if you need more help than I can provide, and if you just want to go to one place for all this stuff,